Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the invitation for the conference. I'd like to present a case of uncommon uveitis. 67-year-old Caucasian female came to our emergency department in December last year. She complained of uh, right eye, photophobia, redness, and a pain for past day, and blurred, foggy-like vision for past two weeks. When it comes to her left eye, she complained of low vision acuity for over a year. Her past medical history was positive for hypertension, back and joint pain, thrombocythemia, cardiac arrest, and she has just been diagnosed with some kind of a pancreatic tumor. When it comes to the ocular history, it was positive for recurrent uveitis of her left eye from April 2016. She had developed a secondary glaucoma as well, but she did not take any medications. Of, of, on ophthalmic examination, we found out that her vision acuity of her right eye is decreased. Her intraocular pressure was within normal limits. Anterior segment uh, was uh, positive for marked ciliary injection, keratic precipitates, including mutton fat precipitates. In AC, we could see flare, fibrin membrane, iris rubiosis, and some kind of iris bulging as well as posterior synechia and cataract. Fundus was within normal limits. When it comes to her left eye, her vision acuity was at the level of hand movement. She had highly elevated intraocular pressure, 40 millimeters of mercury. Uh, her, in the anterior, anterior segment, she had marked ciliary injection, corneal edema, her anterior chamber seemed clear, but she had a lot of posterior synechia uh, iris bulging as well, and cataract. The fundus was not visible. This is the reason why we did some more tests. On ultra microscopy, as you can see here, we, fo we found that she had iris nodules and of course posterior synechia. Ultrasound showed uh, signs of vitreous in both eyes, more severely marked in her left eye. Her chest x-ray was negative, it was clear. Do you have any idea what can be the cause? We decided to dig deeper in, in her past medical history. From April 2016, she's been coming back and forth to different ophthalmologists with recurrent anterior uveitis. First, there were signs of non-granulomatous uveitis, and then it slightly changed and became granulomatous. She, unfortunately, she didn't, uh, she didn't uh, follow the indicated diagnostics and treatment. At that time, she had no general condition that we could link to her disease, except for some slight joint and back pain. Back, back pain. This changed at the beginning of 2019. She has had some neoplastic process in her pancreas diagnosed, uh, and it was probably diffused. She had abdomen, abdominal MRI scan that showed enlarged lymph nodes in her abdomen, that, and that was the reason they did the PET scan. At the PET scan, they discovered that the lymphadenopathy is not only in her abdominal, but also in her chest and neck. Then, her doctors decided to biopsy the tumor of the pancreas, and they found out that it was some kind of a granuloma. They scheduled her, they scheduled her for tuberculosis skin test, but she didn't go there. So we added, added those things, and we decided that this may be the reason why she's having her uveitis. We asked her and her son to go and have the tuberculosis test done and they follow our, indi our indication. The T TBT test was positive. Then they sent uh, the frozen biopsy material from her pancreas to some special lab for PCR for mycobacterium tuberculosis, and that was as well positive. So uh, they diagnosed her with nodular tuberculosis and put her on treatment. First, she got four drug therapy for two months and then for next four months, she's been on two drugs. She well tolerated the treatment.
Unfortunately, in April 2020, she's, under, she's had ischemic stroke, causing her right side paralysis and aphasia. She just recently came to us uh, for a follow-up visit. Uh, the signs of granulomatous uh, uveitis were gone. Uh, there were resolution of iris nodules, no carotid precipitations. Uh, still, uh, she had the posterior synechia and cataract. Uh, when it comes to the left eye, she stopped taking um, medication we indicated. Uh, she, were, she was just putting drops now and then. That's the reason why she had highly elevated intraocular pressure in that eye and massive iris rubiosis. Uh, ultrasound of this eye and with, of the right eye was within normal limits. What can we learn from that case? We should always remember to consider a wide differential diagnosis when evaluating a patient with granulomatous uvi uveitis. We should take time and patience with, the, uh, with our patient with general medical history. And we should always make sure that the patient understand us and understand the need of treatment and further diagnostics. Those are the references we used in our case. Thank you for your time. As, as it's uh, Friday weekend, the, uh, the last question is, who needs glasses? Thank you for your time. <laughs>